Today we have a gospel that I think when we look at it through the point of view of our first reading, makes it rather interesting. We have um, Herod, um, and he's concerned because for the, he's been hearing about the different things that Jesus Christ has been doing as he's been um, traveling, first of all, in the countryside of Judea, and now as he's making his way um, to Jerusalem. And um, he's wondering, you know, what all these things mean, because people are comparing Jesus to John the Baptist, um, and of course, you know, John the Baptist being, you know, such a um, great charismatic figure um, would be a, a likely comparison. Um, and of course, John um, was beheaded by Herod. So he's wondering what all this was. And also Elijah was a great, great prophet and um, they were expecting Elijah's return. And so again, in the person of Jesus Christ, um, um, Herod wondered whether or not maybe um, this was the return of Elijah. And he probably wasn't all that comforted by um, these things. But, you know, he kept um, wanting to see who Jesus was. And what I think is happening in that um, particular passage is that God, whether Herod realizes it or not, God is knocking at the door through Jesus Christ and um, wants Herod as, he want, as God wants all of us to be followers of his son. That's why Jesus came, came among us. That's why Jesus gathered people to, to follow him. That's why his successes ended up gathering other people to follow him. That's why we have our church today. And so certainly, you know, th th there is that call, kind of that, that nudging. And when we look at it um, from the point of view of the first reading, you know, um, Herod would have been somebody who um, the, the first reading was speaking of, who had all sorts of wonderful things in life, all sorts of treasures. He had a beautiful palace. He had um, all sorts of servants who took care of his every need. He had wealth. He had power. He um, didn't necessarily have the respect of, of his people, but he you know, certainly was someone who had a great deal of the world's luxuries. But yet in many ways, he also was very empty, which is perhaps why he was curious about the things that John the Baptist had to say, and now was curious about who Jesus was all about, but wasn't ready to take that step in the case of John the Baptist. He took the coward's way out. And obviously, we would have heard if somebody as high up as Herod followed Jesus. And history tells us that that's not the way that he ended up um, living either. So we, we have, um, I think, in, in Herod, in the gospel today, someone who's longing for something. And that longing can only be filled by God and Jesus Christ, who leads us to God. And as I was reflecting on that, I was thinking about two situations. One involved the young man who decided he wanted to have all sorts of good things in life. He decided he didn't need college because he was going to make it on his own. And of course, he wasn't going to um, just, you know, kind of start at some kind of a low-end job. He wanted to start at the top. And in some ways, luck came his way. He ended up getting a job that he thought was going to be his dream job. It was his job to try to convince people who were visiting New York to go to nightclubs. Now that might not sound like that much of a job, but he ended up making about $200,000 a year as, as far as the salary was concerned, not including bonuses he got from merchandising companies. And he was hanging around the rich and the famous. He um, actually had dated a supermodel for a while and thought that that was about the highest point he could ever get. He was um, also to um, fuel this lifestyle. He needed to take a lot of drugs and um, a lot of drinking, but that was you know something that and he thought it was just kind of part of the course. And he was living this life that was very successful, but was rather empty. But when he was on vacation, a tragedy occurred when he was um, staying in a hotel. That tragedy made him think a bit about life. And think about the direction that his life was going. And he ended up making a complete turnaround. He returned to the faith of his childhood and he decided that he did have gifts and skills in publicity and gathering crowds and things. So he changed um, his, his career path from working for the nightclubs to working in um, poor areas of our world, doing um, clean, uh, organizing clean water projects in, for faith-based organizations. He ended up using his skills and his gifts in a very different way. His life had more purpose and meaning. And it was all because God was invited in his life. And he, um, it was, he seriously followed Jesus Christ. 
But you know, I think that oftentimes we, we hear these stories of these great conversions, you know, kind of this, you know, these kind of modern day St. Paul um, conversions or St. Augustine conversions or Thomas Merton or, or Dorothy Day. But many times a lot of these changes of heart come in smaller ways and maybe not from people who might be um, facing rock bottom, but people who might just be looking for purpose and meaning in their life. Because I was also reminded of another person who's a geneticist, and he's very highly regarded in the field. When he was in medical school, he was doing his rounds. And there was a woman who was very sick that was one of his patients, and she didn't have anybody in her family. And she didn't have anybody that, that came to visit. So he decided on his day off, which was a Saturday, that before he was getting together with some friends, he was going to visit her just to see how she was doing. And because he wasn't there doing rounds and didn't have a medical purpose for being there, just kind of a, a casual visit, he ended up talking with her. And she started sharing her life story and her faith in God. And this particular man did not really have any kind of religious upbringing. But as she was speaking, he realized that she had something that he didn't have. And she had something to offer that he truly needed. And he too ended up becoming a Christian and a follower of Christ. Again, you know, he found that purpose and meaning. And I think it reminds us as we're reflecting on these things to kind of think about in our own lives the purpose and meaning in life, as far as God is concerned, and as far as being a follower of Jesus Christ is concerned. Because when we look at life as a gift from God, and look at life as a follower of Jesus Christ, the, way, uh, the direction of our life, whether it be married life, priesthood of religious life, or the single life, is a vocation. Oftentimes our careers can be how we use are God-given gifts. When we look at life from the point of view of gift from God, follow me, Jesus Christ, we see opportunities. And we, when we face challenges, we realize we're not alone. We can, can unite them to those of Jesus Christ. Having God in our life and faith can make a huge difference, or not can, but does make a huge difference. So maybe as we reflect on these readings today, kind of think about the difference that God makes in our lives and what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ.